Oh yeah, 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 I know, I know. All right, all right, bye-bye. Sorry, that was the CEO of All Pizza. Today we're gonna out pizza the hut. Hold on to your pepperonis. So this is But Better episode three or four. I think it's episode four. This is the series where we remake mass manufactured fast foods but with classic cooking techniques with the intention to make them better. Browsing my comments and a lot of people were saying, Josh, please out Pizza the Hut. And I said, you know what? I'll do my best. So that, uh, that's, yeah, that's the synopsis. So uh, with that said, let's do this, shall we? All right, so if we're gonna talk about, oh wait, hold on. We're gonna taste both. Domino's, Pizza Hut, decide which is better and then compete. Only has three and a half stars on Yelp. Uh, can I just do a medium pepperoni pizza? 1760. Delivery time will take 17 minutes. Domino's your next, buddy boy. We'll get you medium one thousand pizzas. But a 15 piece Parmesan red light. Any pizza that's in. And a 2 liter of soda for only 99 pizzas. Jesus, is that how much people eat? Can I just do a medium uh, pepperoni pizza? 1567, okay. I'd say probably 30 minutes or sooner. Awesome, cool. Thank you. So the Domino's and the Pizza Hut guys show up at the same time and they're like, Wait a minute, bro. It took 25 minutes. They're already here. Domino's gets the first pick. Now, here we go. They're doing like a garlic butter thing on the on the crust. Okay. Next. Okay, so Pizza Hut finally arrived uh, an hour and a half later. It's real soft. It's kind of spongy. Oh f damn it! What? It just doesn't taste good. Domino's is the winner. The winner must face the final mob boss. Okay, it's a pizza time. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Italians. So let's start off by making our dough. Now look, if you want a really good dough, the flour choice matters. Double O Tipo Italian flour is what you want, but all purpose works in a pinch. You're gonna need two and a half cups or 380 grams of that. To that, you're gonna add two teaspoons or 10 grams of sugar, one and a quarter teaspoon or six grams of fine sea salt, and optionally half a teaspoon or one gram of diastatic malt powder. I know it sounds fancy. You can get it a lot of places. It just helps with color and flavor. Slap it around with wires attached to a metal stick until thoroughly incorporated. Okay, so here we've got one cup or 245 grams of water at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. To that, we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons or five grams of instant yeast. Mix that together and just let that sit for a couple of minutes until it starts to bubble a little. Now here's the best part of this recipe, no machine required. You can do this all by hand. Just pour all that liquid into your flour mixture, mix it by hand until you get a rough dough sort of looking like this. Dump it out onto your counter and then just start kneading it. Knead it for about five minutes until you get a roughly nice and smooth dough. Now it will feel a little sticky at first, but once you've kneaded it, it should come together and not stick so bad. If you just can't handle it, you can always add a little sprinkling of extra flour, but for the most part, it needs to be pretty hydrated. Now once you've got a nice velvety smooth ball like this, shape it into a slightly top ball by sliding around in circles on a counter, keeping your fingers in contact with the counter so you're sort of tightening it up like that. Lightly grease a medium sized bowl with extra virgin olive oil, toss your dough in there, cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise for about one to two hours at room temperature until thoroughly doubled. Or alternatively, you can let it go overnight in the refrigerator. Now, if you're doing it the same day, you need to start preheating your oven. You're gonna need this pizza stone, obviously. Place it into the upper third of your oven and preheat your oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit for at least an hour before you bake any pizzas. Now let's talk about pizza sauce. Look, unless you live in Italy, I would really recommend just getting the 28 ounce can of peeled San Marzano tomatoes. They're delicious and they're from Italy, plus less prep. Now, I tend to be a little particular about this. Uh, I like to remove the seeds whenever I do this, so you, you can like poke, pop them open and just rip out the seeds, separate them, and then run the juice through a fine mesh strainer. Then I like to add two cloves of garlic, two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of olive oil, salt to taste, and a large pinch of sugar, then just blend that all together until nice and smooth. And well, that's it. I mean, if you wanna cook it down and make it a little thicker so it doesn't get too watery when baking, you totally can, but a lot of the time I don't, and it's still wonderful. Now, let's talk about... <laughs> It's funny to me. Now let's talk about pepperoni, okay? You can pick up whole pepperoni at your local grocery store, hopefully. I have a strong preference to slicing my own. You can get them way thicker and they get those nice sort of like cups. Those peppy cups. Oh yeah, so that's the goods. I like to slice them just a little thicker than about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so once your dough has reached plump boy hours, you're ready to shape. Before you do that, you need to make a quick mixture of, of equal parts cornmeal and all-purpose flour. I did like a half cup and a half cup. Okay, so once you're ready to prep your dough, first realize that you should have brushed your plastic wrap with olive oil. Yeah, that was a stupid mistake. Let Lightly dust a work surface with your cornmeal flour mixture, divide your dough into two evenly sized pieces, and shape into medium top balls same way as we did before, and place them on a generously dusted sheet tray, you know, with that flour mixture. You can cover it with a lot of things, I actually just covered this with another sheet tray. Just beware, as you saw before, the dough will stick to stuff and let them rest for at least 30 minutes. Now while that's resting, let's go ahead and grate our cheese. You'll need a total of three cups of grated cheese. 
And I did equal parts of three different cheeses here. We've got a nice smoked white cheddar, a Monterey Jack, and mozzarella. You can use fresh mozzarella, you can use part skim, whichever one you prefer. And then just grate those on a coarse grater and then toss them all together. Now, if you're using fresh mozzarella, I'd recommend cutting it into really small cubes. Now we need to make one more finishing touch. You'll see how we'll use it. But simply combine a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, a good one, with three cloves of freshly grated garlic and a generous pinch of flaky salt. Mix until homogenized. Time to shape our pizza. Generously dust a work surface with your flour cornmeal mixture. Take one of your pieces of dough and place it on the work surface. Generously dust that, and then just punch around the center to sort of create a very thin perimeter. Now, trust me, you need to be careful here. If you make the perimeter too thick, it will puff up and you'll have a gigantic crust. Just drip the pizza over your hands and rotate it around, letting gravity sort of stretch it carefully. Go slow if you need to. Don't make sure it doesn't tear or get too thin. When it starts to get too thin, place it back down and just sort of stretch it out with roughly a 10 to 12 inch pizza. Place it on a pizza wheel that's also been generously dusted with your flour mixture. Give it a thin coating of your sauce, then your cheese. Well, half your cheese, that is. Or well, however much cheese you want, I don't know. Your pepperoni, evenly dispersed as you can. And then carefully, because this bit is hot, slide it onto your ripping hot pizza stone and let it bake for about five minutes and then broil for an additional minute and you should come out with a beautiful pizza after you pull it out immediately brush just the crust also called the crusty with that beautiful garlic oil we made just a second ago brush it generously don't be scared now let it cool a little slightly before you cut it and enjoy and just repeat with the other pizza Italians listen up I love you guys I don't think that this is a representation of an Italian pizza we're battling Pizza Hut and Domino's okay we're not battling the entire country of Italy so anyway I don't even need to have a conversation about this. The pepperoni cups, crispy, but also melt in your mouth at the same time. The crust, beautiful tear, nice and chewy. That garlic oil, that's a spicy meatball. Whoa. The ugliest, Pizza Hut. The prettiest, mine. Okay. This, you can smell the tomato, the garlic, the spicy pepperoni. Needless to say, we definitely out Pizza the Hut. But, I'm the winner. It's me. Shooter's gonna shoot, winner's gonna win, baby. But do you wanna know what else is gonna out Pizza the Hut? Guys, and that is it. So we made pizza, but not just any pizza. We made a pizza to out pizza the hut and Domino's. I decided to throw Domino's into the mix because, well, to me, it felt kind of weird to just do Pizza Hut and just do Domino's. So I figured, why not do both? I, th I honestly think that there were some negatives to my pizza. I will say that. For one, I don't think the bottom was as crispy as it should have been. It was still kind of floppy, which is a problem. Uh, and the Main reason for that is actually because it's very hard to get the stone hot enough. If it weren't for the immense amount of flavor and beautiful appearance of the pizza, I really think we might have almost lost uh, simply because of that one factor. For those of you who watched at the end, I would like to treat you. And by treating you, uh, by showing you the hat for merch. You ready? Okay, I'm gonna go get it. This is one of three pieces, okay? It's not just the hat. We're also gonna be doing an apron and we're also gonna be doing a shirt. But I really like the hat a lot, so I decided I would show you. You ready? It's a cute little thing. Don't get too hyped up, all right? Calm the hell down. There it is, okay? Look at that. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little Santoku, little Japanese Santoku knife. For those of you who watched to the end and you saw that, that is my thank you to you for watching my videos all the way through. I so appreciate you, okay? Many kisses. Uh, anyway, so if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. I appreciate you, I love you, thank you so much for everything that you guys do for me. We've trended two videos in a row. Well, I don't know about this one. We'll just let this one just, we'll, we're, we're gonna do our best every time, okay? You show up to the fight. Anyway, goodbye, have a wonderful day, I love you.